The Yoga Sutras of Patanali are a collection of 196 Indian sutras aphorisms on the theory and practice of yoga. The Yoga Sutras were compiled prior to 400 CE by sage Patanjali who synthesized and organized knowledge about yoga from older traditions. The Yoga Sutras of Patanali was the most translated ancient Indian text in the medieval era, having been translated into about 40 Indian languages and two non-Indian languages, Old Javanese and Arabic. David Gordon White points to a period of when the text fell into relative obscurity for nearly 700 years from the 12th to 19th century, and made a comeback in late 19th century due to the efforts of Swami Vivekananda, the Theosophical Society and others. It gained prominence again as a comeback classic in the 20th century. Before the 20th century, history indicates that the medieval Indian yoga scene was dominated by the various other texts such as the Bhagavad Gita and the Yoga Vasistha, texts attributed to Yajnavakya and Hiranyagarbha, as well as literature on Hatha Yoga, Tantric Yoga, and Pashapada Shaivism Yoga rather than the Yoga Sutras of Patanali. In the 20th century, modern practitioners of yoga elevated the Yoga Sutras to a status it never knew previously. Hindu Orthodox tradition holds the Yoga Sutras of Patanali to be one of the foundational texts of classical yoga philosophy. However, the appropriation, and misappropriation, of the Yoga Sutras and its influence on later systematizations of yoga has been questioned by scholars such as David Gordon White. Topic. Author and dating Topic. Author The Yoga Sutras text is attributed to Patanjali. Much confusion surrounds this Patanali, because an author of the same name is credited to be the author of the classic text on Sanskrit grammar named Mahabhasya. Yet the two works in Sanskrit are completely different in subject matter. Furthermore, before the time of Bhoja 11th century, no known text states that the authors were the same. Topic. Dating Philip A. Moss assesses Patanali's Yoga Sutra's date to be about 400 CE, based on tracing the commentaries on it published in the first millennium CE, and a review of extant literature. Edwin Bryant, on the other hand, surveys the major commentators in his translation of the Yoga Sutras. He observes that most scholars date the text shortly after the turn of the Common Era, circa first to second century, but that it has been placed as early as several centuries before that. Bryant concludes that, "...a number of scholars have dated the Yoga Sutras as late as the 4th or 5th century CE, but these arguments have all been challenged. All such arguments for a late date are problematic." Michel Desmarais summarizes a wide variety of dates assigned to Yoga Sutra, ranging from 500 BCE to 3rd century CE, noting that there is a paucity of evidence for any certainty. She states the text may have been composed at an earlier date given conflicting theories on how to date it, but latter dates are more commonly accepted by scholars. Topic. Compilation The Yoga Sutras are a composite of various traditions. The levels of samadhi taught in the text resemble the Buddhist jhanas. According to Feuerstein, the Yoga Sutras are a condensation of two different traditions, namely Eight Limb Yoga, Astanga Yoga, and Action Yoga, Kriya Yoga. The Kriya Yoga part is contained in Chapter One, Chapter Two, Sutra One to Twenty Seven, Chapter Three, except Sutra Fifty Four and Chapter Four. The Eight Limb Yoga is described in Chapter Two, Sutra Twenty Eight to Fifty Five, and Chapter Three, Sutra Three and Fifty Four. According to Moss, Patanali's composition was entitled Patanjali Yogasastra, the treatise on yoga according to Patanali and consisted of both sutras and basya. According to Wujistic, referencing Moss, Patanjali integrated yoga from older traditions in Patanyalayogasastra, and added his own explanatory passages to create the unified work that, since 1100 CE, has been considered the work of two people. Together the compilation of Patanjali's sutras and the Vyasabhasya, is called Patanyalayogasastra. According to Moss, this means that the earliest commentary on the Yoga Sutras, the Bhasya, that has commonly been ascribed to some unknown later author Vyasa the editor, was Patanjali's own work. Topic. Contents 
Patanali divided his Yoga Sutras into four chapters or books Sanskrit pada, containing in all 196 aphorisms, divided as follows Samadhi Pada 51 sutras. Samadhi refers to a state of direct and reliable perception pramana where the yogi's self-identity is absorbed into the object meditated upon, collapsing the categories of witness, witnessing, and witnessed. Samadhi is the main technique the yogin learns by which to dive into the depths of the mind to achieve kaivalya. The author describes yoga and then the nature and the means to attaining samadhi. This chapter contains the famous definitional verse, Yoga's sata vritti niradha. Yoga is the restraint of mental modifications. Sadhana Pada 55 sutras. Sadhana is the Sanskrit word for practice or discipline. Here the author outlines two forms of yoga, Kriya Yoga and Ashtanga Yoga, eightfold or eight-limbed yoga. Kriya Yoga in the Yoga Sutras is the practice of three of the niyamas of Astanga Yoga, tapas, svadaya, and isvara pradana, austerity, self-study, and devotion to God. Astanga Yoga is the yoga of eight limbs, yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara, dharana, dhyana, and samadhi. Vibhuti Pada 56 sutras. Vibhuti is the Sanskrit word for power or manifestation. Supranormal powers Sanskrit, siddhi, are acquired by the practice of yoga. Combined simultaneous practice of dharana, dhyana and samadhi is referred to as samyama, and is considered a tool of achieving various perfections, or siddhas. The text warns 3 .37 that these powers can become an obstacle to the yogi who seeks liberation. Kaivalya Pada 34 sutras. Kaivalya literally translates to isolation. But as used in the sutras stands for emancipation or liberation and is used where other texts often employ the term moksha liberation. The Kaivalya Pada describes the process of liberation and the reality of the transcendental ego. Topic: <laughs> 8 components of yoga. Patanjali begins his treatise by stating the purpose of his book in the first sutra, followed by defining the word yoga. In his second sutra of Book 1, Yoga Sata Virti Naroda Yoga Sata Virti Niradha. This terse definition hinges on the meaning of three Sanskrit terms. I. K. Taimni translates it as, Yoga is the inhibition of the modifications of the mind. Swami Vivekananda translates the sutra as, Yoga is restraining the mind stuff from taking various forms. Edwin Bryant states that, to Patanjali, "...yoga essentially consists of meditative practices culminating in attaining a state of consciousness free from all modes of active or discursive thought, and of eventually attaining a state where consciousness is unaware of any object external to itself, that is, is only aware of its own nature as consciousness unmixed with any other object." Topic. 1. Yamas. Yamas are ethical rules in Hinduism and can be thought of as moral imperatives. The five yamas listed by Patanali in Yoga Sutra 2. 30 are Ahimsa, Ahimsa non-violence, non-harming other living beings Satya, Satya truthfulness, non-falsehood Astya, Astya non-stealing Brahmacharya, Brahmacharya chastity, marital fidelity or sexual restraint Aparigraha, Aparigraha non avarice, non possessiveness. Patanjali, in Book 2, states how and why each of the above self restraints help in the personal growth of an individual. For example, in verse 2.35, Patanjali states that the virtue of non violence and non injury to others ahimsa leads to the abandonment of enmity, a state that leads the yogi to the perfection of inner and outer amity with everyone, everything. Topic. 2. Niyama The second component of Patanjali's yoga path is called niyama, which includes virtuous habits, behaviors and observances the dose. Sadhana Pada verse 32 lists the niyamas as Saka, purity, clearness of mind, speech and body Santosa, contentment, acceptance of others, acceptance of one's circumstances as they are in order to get past or change them, optimism for self Tapas, persistence, perseverance, austerity 
Svadaya, study of Vedas, see Sabda in epistemology section, study of self, self-reflection, introspection of self's thoughts, speeches and actions. Isvara Pranadana, contemplation of the Ishvara, God, Supreme Being, Brahman, True Self, Unchanging Reality. As with the Yamas, Patanjali explains how and why each of the above niyamas help in the personal growth of an individual. For example, in verse 2.42, Patanjali states that the virtue of contentment and acceptance of others as they are santosa leads to the state where inner sources of joy matter most, and the craving for external sources of pleasure ceases. Topic. 3. Asana Patanjali begins discussion of asana, asana posture by defining it in verse 46 of Book 2, as follows Starasakamasanam, translation 1, an asana is what is steady and pleasant, translation 2, motionless and agreeable form of staying is asana yoga posture. Asana is thus a posture that one can hold for a period of time, staying relaxed, steady, comfortable and motionless. Patanjali does not list any specific asana, except the terse suggestion, posture one can hold with comfort and motionlessness. Aranya translates verse 2.47 of Yoga Sutra as, asanas are perfected over time by relaxation of effort with meditation on the infinite. This combination and practice stops the quivering of body. The posture that causes pain or restlessness is not a yogic posture. Other secondary texts studying Patanjali's sutra state that one requirement of correct posture is to keep chest, neck and head erect proper spinal posture, later yoga school scholars developed, described and commented on numerous postures. Vyasa, for example, in his Basya commentary on Patanjali's treatise suggests twelve, Padmasana lotus, Virasana heroic, Bhadrasana glorious, Svastikasana like the mystical sign, Dandasana staff, Sopasrayasana supported, Paryankasana bedstead, Krancha Nishadasana seated heron, Hastanishadasana seated elephant, Ushtranishadasana seated camel, Samasansthanasana evenly balanced and Starasakasana any motionless posture that is in accordance with one's pleasure. The Hatha Yoga Pradipika mentions 84 asanas taught by Shiva, stating four of these as most important: Siddhasana accomplished, Padmasana lotus, Sinhasana lion, and Bhadrasana glorious, and describes the technique of these four and eleven other asanas. The Garanda Samhita discussed 32 asanas, while Svatmarama describes 15 asanas. Topic four: Pranayama. Pranayama is made out of two Sanskrit words prana, prana breath and ayama, ayama restraining, extending, stretching. After a desired posture has been achieved, verses 2.49 through 2.51 recommend the next limb of yoga, pranayama, which is the practice of consciously regulating breath inhalation and exhalation. This is done in several ways, inhaling and then suspending exhalation for a period, exhaling and then suspending inhalation for a period, slowing the inhalation and exhalation, consciously changing the time, length of breath deep, short breathing. Topic. 5. Pratyahara Pratyahara is a combination of two Sanskrit words prati the prefix prati, against, or contra, and ahara, are bring near, fetch. Pratyahara is drawing within one's awareness. It is a process of retracting the sensory experience from external objects. It is a step of self-extraction and abstraction. Pratyahara is not consciously closing one's eyes to the sensory world, it is consciously closing one's mind processes to the sensory world. Pratyahara empowers one to stop being controlled by the external world, fetch one's attention to seek self knowledge and experience the freedom innate in one's inner world. Pratyahara marks the transition of yoga experience from first four limbs that perfect external forms to last three limbs that perfect inner state, from outside to inside, from outer sphere of body to inner sphere of spirit. Topic. 6. Dharana Dharana Sanskrit, dharana means concentration, introspective focus and one-pointedness of mind. The root of word is dur, dur which has a meaning of to hold, maintain, keep. Dharana as the sixth limb of yoga, is holding one's mind onto a particular inner state, subject or topic of one's mind. The mind is fixed on a mantra, or one's breath, navel, tip of tongue, any place, or an object one wants to observe, or a concept, idea in one's mind. 
Fixing the mind means one pointed focus, without drifting of mind, and without jumping from one topic to another. Topic 7. Dhyana. Dhyana Sanskrit, dhyana literally means contemplation, reflection, and profound, abstract meditation. Dhyana is contemplating, reflecting on whatever dharana has focused on. If in the sixth limb of yoga one focused on a personal deity, dhyana is its contemplation. If the concentration was on one object, dhyana is non-judgmental, non-presumptuous observation of that object. If the focus was on a concept, idea, dhyana is contemplating that concept, idea in all its aspects, forms and consequences. Dhyana is uninterrupted train of thought, current of cognition, flow of awareness. Dhyana is integrally related to dharana, one leads to other. Dharana is a state of mind, dhyana the process of mind. Dhyana is distinct from dharana in that the meditator becomes actively engaged with its focus. Patanjali defines contemplation dhyana as the mind process, where the mind is fixed on something, and then there is a course of uniform modification of knowledge. Adi Shankara, in his commentary on Yoga Sutras, distinguishes dhyana from dharana, by explaining dhyana as the yoga state when there is only the stream of continuous thought about the object, uninterrupted by other thoughts of different kind for the same object. Dharana, states Shankara, is focused on one object, but aware of its many aspects and ideas about the same object. Shankara gives the example of a yogin in a state of dharana on morning sun may be aware of its brilliance, color and orbit. The yogin in dhyana state contemplates on sun's orbit alone for example, without being interrupted by its color, brilliance or other related ideas. Topic 8. Samadhi. Samadhi Sanskrit samadhi literally means putting together, joining, combining with, union, harmonious whole, trance. Samadhi is oneness with the subject of meditation. There is no distinction, during the eighth limb of yoga, between the actor of meditation, the act of meditation and the subject of meditation. Samadhi is that spiritual state when one's mind is so absorbed in whatever it is contemplating on, that the mind loses the sense of its own identity. The thinker, the thought process and the thought fuse with the subject of thought. There is only oneness, samadhi. Topic. Discussion Topic. Samadhi Samadhi is of two kinds, with and without support of an object of meditation. Sampranata samadhi, also called Savikalpa samadhi and Sabiya samadhi, meditation with support of an object. Sampranata samadhi is associated with deliberation, reflection, bliss, and I am ness. The first two associations, deliberation and reflection, form the basis of the various types of samapati, savatarka. Deliberative. The sata is concentrated upon a gross object of meditation, an object with a manifest appearance that is perceptible to our senses, such as a flame of a lamp, the tip of the nose, or the image of a deity. Conceptualization still takes place, in the form of perception, the word and the knowledge of the object of meditation. When the deliberation is ended this is called nirvitarka samadhi. Savachara. Reflective. The sata is concentrated upon a subtle object of meditation, which is not perpetable to the senses, but arrived at through inference, such as the senses, the process of cognition, the mind, the I am ness, the chakras, the inner breath, prana, the nadis, the intellect. Buddy. The stilling of reflection is called nirvachara samapati. The last two associations, sananda samadhi and sasmita, are respectively a state of meditation, and an object of savachara samadhi. Sananda samadhi, ananda. Bliss. This state emphasizes the still subtler state of bliss in meditation. Sasmita, the sata is concentrated upon the sense or feeling of I am Ness. A samprajnata samadhi, also called nirvikalpa samadhi and nirbhya samadhi, meditation without an object, which leads to knowledge of purusha or consciousness, the subtlest element. Topic: <laughs> Ananda and Asmita. According to Ian Witcher, the status of Sananda and Sasmita in Patanjali's system is a matter of dispute. According to Mail, the first two constituents, deliberation and reflection, form the basis of the various types of samapati. According to Feuerstein, joy and I am Ness 
must be regarded as accompanying phenomena of every cognitive ecstasy. The explanations of the classical commentators on this point appear to be foreign to Patanjali's hierarchy of ecstatic states, and it seems unlikely that Ananda and Asmita should constitute independent levels of samadhi. Ian Witcher disagrees with Feuerstein, seeing Ananda and Asmita as later stages of Nirvikara Samapati. Witcher refers to Vikaspati Misra 900-980 CE, the founder of the Bhamati Advaita Vedanta who proposes eight types of Samapati. Savitarka Samapati and Nirvitarka Samapati, both with gross objects as objects of support. Savakara Samapati and Nirvikara Samapati, both with subtle objects as objects of support. Sananda Samapati and Nirananda Samapati, both with the sense organs as objects of support. Sasmita Samapati and Narasmita Samapati, both with the sense of I am Ness as support. Vijnana Bhikshu ca. proposes a six stage model, explicitly rejecting Vikaspati Misra's model. Vijnana Bhikshu regards joy Ananda as a state that arises when the mind passes beyond the Vikara stage. Witcher agrees that Ananda is not a separate stage of samadhi. According to Witcher, Patanjali's own view seems to be that Nirvakara Samadhi is the highest form of cognitive ecstasy. Epistemology The epistemology in Patanjali's system of yoga, like the Samkhya school of Hinduism, relies on three of six pramanas, as the means of gaining reliable knowledge. These included pratyaksa perception, anumana inference, and sabda aptavakana, word testimony of reliable sources. Patanjali's system, like the Samkhya school, considers pratyaksa or dristam direct sense perception, anumana inference, and sabda or aptavakana verbal testimony of the sages or shastras to be the only valid means of knowledge or pramana. Unlike few other schools of Hinduism such as Advaita Vedanta, yoga did not adopt the following three pramanas, upamana comparison and analogy, arthapati postulation, deriving from circumstances or anupalabdi non-perception, negative, cognitive proof. Metaphysics The metaphysics of Patanjali is built on the same dualist foundation as the Samkhya school. The universe is conceptualized as of two realities in Samkhya Yoga schools, Purusa consciousness and Prakriti matter. It considers consciousness and matter, self, soul and body as two different realities. Jiva a living being, is considered as a state in which Purusa is bonded to Prakriti in some form, in various permutations and combinations of various elements, senses, feelings, activity and mind. During the state of imbalance or ignorance, one of more constituents overwhelm the others, creating a form of bondage. The end of this bondage is called liberation, or moksha by both yoga and Samkhya school of Hinduism. The ethical theory of yoga school is based on yamas and niyama, as well as elements of the guna theory of Samkhya. Patanjali adopts the theory of guna from Samkhya. Guna's theory states that three gunas innate tendency, attributes are present in different proportions in all beings, and these three are sattva guna goodness, constructive, harmonious, rajas guna passion, active, confused, and tamas guna darkness, destructive, chaotic. These three are present in every being but in different proportions, and the fundamental nature and psychological dispositions of beings is a consequence of the relative proportion of these three gunas. When sattva guna predominates an individual, the qualities of lucidity, wisdom, constructiveness, harmony, and peacefulness manifest themselves. When rajas is predominant, attachment, craving, passion driven activity, and restlessness manifest, and when tamas predominates in an individual, ignorance, delusion, destructive behavior, lethargy, and suffering manifests. The gunas theory underpins the philosophy of mind in yoga school of Hinduism. Soteriology Samkhya school suggests that jnana knowledge is a sufficient means to moksha. Patanjali suggests that systematic techniques, practice personal experimentation combined with Samkhya's approach to knowledge is the path to moksha. Patanjali holds that ignorance is the cause of suffering and samsara. Liberation, like many other schools, is removal of ignorance, which is achieved through discriminative discernment, knowledge and self-awareness. The Yoga Sutras is Yoga School's treatise on how to accomplish this. Samadhi is the state where ecstatic awareness develops, state yoga scholars, and this is how one starts the process of becoming aware of Purusa and True Self. 
It further claims that this awareness is eternal, and once this awareness is achieved, a person cannot ever cease being aware. This is moksha, the soteriological goal in Hinduism. Book 3 of Patanjali's Yoga Sutra is dedicated to soteriological aspects of yoga philosophy. Patanjali begins by stating that all limbs of yoga are necessary foundation to reaching the state of self awareness, freedom, and liberation. He refers to the three last limbs of yoga as sanyama, in verses 3.4 to 3.5, and calls it the technology for discerning principle and mastery of sata and self knowledge. In verse 3.12, the Yoga Sutras state that this discerning principle then empowers one to perfect san tranquility and udita reason in one's mind and spirit, through intentness. This leads to one's ability to discern the difference between sabda word, artha meaning and pratyaya understanding, and this ability empowers one to compassionately comprehend the cry, speech of all living beings. Once a yogi reaches this state of samyama, it leads to unusual powers, intuition, self-knowledge, freedoms and kaivalya, the soteriological goal of the yogi. God Patanjali differs from the closely related non-theistic, atheistic Samkhya school by incorporating the concept of a «personal, yet essentially inactive, deity» or «personal god» Ishvara. Hindu scholars such as the 8th century Adi Sankara, as well as many modern academic scholars describe yoga school as «Samkhya school with God». The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali use the term Isvara in 11 verses, I.23 through I.29, 2.1, 2.2, 2.32 and 2.45. Ever since the sutra's release, Hindu scholars have debated and commented on who or what is Isvara. These commentaries range from defining Isvara from a personal god, to special self, to anything that has spiritual significance to the individual. Witcher states that while Patanjali's terse verses can be interpreted both as theistic or non-theistic, Patanjali's concept of Isvara in yoga philosophy functions as a "...transformative catalyst or guide for aiding the yogin on the path to spiritual emancipation." Patanjali defines Isvara Sanskrit, Isvara in verse 24 of Book 1, as "...a special self, purusavasesa purusa vasesa." Klesikarmavipakasayara paramursta purasavasesa isvara. This sutra adds the characteristics of isvara as that special self which is unaffected, aparamursta aparamursta by one's obstacles, hardships, klesa klesha, one's circumstances created by past or one's current actions, karma karma, one's life fruits, vipaka vipaka, and one's psychological dispositions, intentions, asaya ashaya. Philosophical roots and influences The Yoga Sutras incorporated the teachings of many other Indian philosophical systems prevalent at the time. Samkhya and Yoga are thought to be two of the many schools of philosophy that originated over the centuries that had common roots in the non-Vedic cultures and traditions of India. The orthodox Hindu philosophies of Samkhya, Yoga, Vedanta, as well as the non-orthodox Nastika systems of Jainism and Buddhism can all be seen as representing one stream of spiritual activity in ancient India, in contrast to the Bhakti traditions and Vedic ritualism which were also prevalent at the same time. The Vedanta Sramana traditions, iconolatry and Vedic rituals can be identified with the Jnana Marga, Bhakti Marga and the Karma Marga respectively that are outlined in the Bhagavad Gita. Hinduism The Yoga Sutras are built on a foundation of Samkhya philosophy, an orthodox and atheistic Hindu system of dualism, and are generally seen as the practice while Samkhya is the theory. The influence of Samkhya is so pervasive in the sutras that the historian Surendranath Dasgupta went so far as to deny independent categorization to Patanali's system, preferring to refer to it as Patanyala Samkhya, similar to the position taken by the Jain writer Haribhadra in his commentary on yoga. Patanali's Yoga Sutras accept the Samkhya's division of the world and phenomena into 25 tattvas or principles, of which one is purusha meaning self or consciousness, the others being prakriti primal nature, buddhi intellect or will, ahamkara ego, manas mind, five buddhindriyas sensory capabilities, five karmandriyas action capabilities and ten elements. 
The second part of the sutras, the Sadhana, also summarizes the Samkhya perspectives about all seen activity lying within the realm of the three gunas of sattva illumination, rajas passion, and tamas lethargy. .The Yoga Sutras diverge from early Samkhya by the addition of the principle of Isvara or God, as exemplified by Sutra 1.23, Isvara Pranidhanat Va, which is interpreted to mean that surrender to God is one way to liberation. Isvara is defined here as a distinct consciousness, untouched by afflictions, actions, fruitions or their residue." In the sutras, it is suggested that devotion to Isvara, represented by the mystical syllable Om may be the most efficient method of achieving the goal of yoga. This syllable Om is a central element of Hinduism, appearing in all the Upanishads, including the earliest Chandogya and Brihadaranyaka Upanishads, and expounded upon in the Mandukya Upanishad. Another divergence from Samkhya is that while the Samkhya holds that knowledge is the means to liberation, Patanali's yoga insists on the methods of concentration and active striving. The aim of yoga is to free the individual from the clutches of matter, and considers intellectual knowledge alone to be inadequate for the purpose, which is different from the position taken by Samkhya. However, the essential similarities between the Samkhya and Patanali's system remained even after the addition of the Isvara principle, with Max Muller noting that, "...the two philosophies were in popular parlance distinguished from each other as Samkhya with and Samkhya without a lord." The Bhagavad Gita, one of the chief scriptures of Hinduism, is considered to be based on this synthetic Samkhya Yoga system. The Yoga Sutras of Patanali is a foundational text of the Yoga philosophy school of Hinduism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Buddhism. Scholars have presented different viewpoints on the relationship between Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and the teachings in Buddhist texts. Carol Werner writes. Patanjali's system is unthinkable without Buddhism. As far as its terminology goes there is much in the Yoga Sutras that reminds us of Buddhist formulations from the Pali Canon and even more so from the Sarvastivada Abhidharma and from Sautrantika." He adds, "...upon the whole it Patanjali's Yoga Sutras is more elaborate and summarizes the actual technique of yoga procedures more exactly than the Buddhist exposition." However, states Werner, the Buddha was the founder of his system, even though, admittedly, he made use of some of the experiences he had previously gained under various yoga teachers of his time. Patanjali is neither a founder nor a leader of a new movement. The ingenuity of his Patanjali's achievement lies in the thoroughness and completeness with which all the important stages of yoga practice and mental experiences are included in his scheme, and in their systematic presentation in a succinct treatise." Werner adds that the ideas of existence and the focus on self, soul, in Patahali's Yoga Sutra are different from the no self. Precepts of Buddhism, according to David Gordon White, the language of the Yoga Sutras is often closer to Buddhist hybrid Sanskrit, the Sanskrit of the early Mahayana Buddhist scriptures, than to the classical Sanskrit of other Hindu scriptures. He adds, historical evidence suggests that yoga philosophical systems influenced, and were influenced by, other philosophical systems in India, such as early Buddhism and Jainism. White mentions controversies about the Yoga Sutras. A significant minority of scholars, notes White for example, believes that Vyasa lived a few centuries after Patanjali and his Hindu Ising commentary subverted Yoga Sutra's original Buddhist teachings. While the majority scholarly view disagrees with this view, other scholars state there are differences between the teachings in the Yoga Sutras and those in Buddhist texts. Patanjali's Yoga Sutras for example, states Michel Desmarias, accept the concept of a self or soul behind the operational mind, while Buddhists do not accept such a self exists. The role of self is central to the idea of Samyoga, Sita, self-awareness and other concepts in chapters 2 through 4 of the Yoga Sutras. According to Desmarias, according to Barbara Miller, the difference between Patanjali's Yoga Sutras and teachings in Buddhist texts is in Samkhya and Yoga, as in Buddhism and Jainism, the most salient characteristic of existence is dukkha or suffering. According to Buddhism, the origin of suffering is desire, according to Yoga, it is the connection between the observer with the observed In both systems, the origin of dukkha is ignorance. There are also similarities in the means of deliverance recommended by the two systems. 
In Buddhism, the aspirant is asked to follow the Eightfold Path, which culminates in right meditation or samadhi. In yoga, the aspirant is asked to follow a somewhat different eightfold path, which also culminates in samadhi. But the aim of yoga meditation is conceived in terms that a Buddhist would not accept, as the separation of an eternal conscious self from unconscious matter. The purpose of Patanjali's yoga is to bring about this separation by means of understanding, devotion and practice. Robert Thurman writes that Patanali was influenced by the success of the Buddhist monastic system to formulate his own matrix for the version of thought he considered orthodox. However, it is also to be noted that the Yoga Sutra, especially the fourth segment of Kaivalya Pada, contains several polemical verses critical of Buddhism, particularly the Vijñanavada school of Vasubandhu. <laughs> Jainism The five yamas or the constraints of the Yoga Sutras of Patanali bear an uncanny resemblance to the five major vows of Jainism, indicating influence of Jainism. Three other teachings closely associated with Jainism also make an appearance in yoga, the doctrine of colors in karma lesya, the telos of isolation kavala in Jainism and kaivalyam in yoga, and the practice of nonviolence ahimsa, though nonviolence ahimsa made its first appearance in Indian philosophy cum religion in the Hindu texts known as the Upanishads the Chandogya Upanishad, dated to the 8th or 7th century BCE, one of the oldest Upanishads, has the earliest evidence for the use of the word ahimsa in the sense familiar in Hinduism a code of conduct. It bars violence against all creatures. Sarvabuddha and the practitioner of ahimsa is said to escape from the cycle of metonpsychosis, reincarnation It also names ahimsa as one of five essential virtues. Translations and commentaries The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali was the most translated ancient Indian text in the medieval era, having been translated into about 40 Indian languages and two non-Indian languages, Old Javanese and Arabic. In early 11th century, the Persian scholar Al-Biruni visited India, lived with Hindus for 16 years, and with their help translated several significant Sanskrit works into Arabic and Persian languages. One of these was Patanjali's Yoga Sutras. His translation included the text and a hitherto unknown Sanskrit commentary. Al-Biruni's translation preserved many of the core themes of yoga philosophy of Hinduism, but certain sutras and analytical commentaries were restated making it more consistent with Islamic monotheistic theology. Al-Biruni's version of Yoga Sutras reached Persia and Arabian Peninsula by about 1050 AD. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali was translated into Old Javanese by Indonesian Hindus, and the text was called Dharma Patanyala. The surviving text has been dated to about 1450 CE, however it is unclear if this text is a copy of an earlier translation and whether other translations existed in Indonesia. This translation shares ideas found in other Indian translations particularly those in the Saiva traditions, and some in Al-Biruni translation, but it is also significantly different in parts from the 11th century Arabic translation. The most complete copy of the Dharma Patanyala manuscript is now held at the Staatsbibliothek in Berlin. By early 21st century, scholars had located 37 editions of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras published between 1874 and 1992, and 82 different manuscripts, from various locations in India, Nepal, Pakistan, Europe, and the United States, many in Sanskrit, some in different North and South Indian languages. The numerous historical variants show that the text was a living document and it was changed as these manuscripts were transmitted or translated, with some ancient and medieval manuscripts marked with «corrections» in the margin of the pages and elsewhere by unknown authors and for unclear reasons. This has made the chronological study of Yoga school of philosophy a difficult task. Many commentaries have been written on the Yoga Sutras. Yogabhashya and others The Yogabhashya is a commentary on the Yoga Sutras of Patanali which has traditionally been attributed in the discourse of the tradition to the legendary Vedic sage Vyasa who is said to have composed the Mahabharata. This commentary is indispensable for the understanding of the aphoristic and terse Yoga Sutras, and the study of the Sutras has always referred to the Yogabhashya. 
Some scholars see Vyasa as a later 4th or 5th century CE commentator as opposed to the ancient mythic figure. Other scholars hold that both texts, the sutras and the commentary were written by one person. According to Philip A. Moss, based on a study of the original manuscripts, Patanali's composition was entitled Patanyalayogasastra, the treatise on yoga according to Patanali, and consisted of both sutras and basya. This means that the basya was in fact Patanali's own work. The practice of writing a set of aphorisms with the author's own explanation was well known at the time of Patanali, as for example in Vasubandhu's Abhidharmakasabhasya that, incidentally, Patanali quotes. These research findings change the historical understanding of the yoga tradition, since they allow us to take the Basya as Patanali's very own explanation of the meaning of his somewhat cryptic sutras. The Yogabhashya states that yoga in the Yoga Sutras has the meaning of samadhi. Another commentary the Vivarana by a certain Shankara confirms the interpretation of Yoga Samadhi. Ybh. I. One, yoga in Patanali's sutra has the meaning of integration. This Shankara may or may not have been the famed Vedantic scholar Adi Shankara 8th or 9th century. Scholarly opinion is still open on this issue. Another later writer is Vikaspati Misra 900-980 CE who composed the commentary Tattvavasaradi on the sutras. The interpretation of the word yoga as union is the result of later, external influences that include the Bhakti movement, Vedanta and Kashmiri Savism. But Svarupa Pratishtha last sutra of last chapter in Patanali's Yoga Sutra, i.e., resting in one's real identity is the ultimate goal of yoga, and it can also be expressed as union with one's real identity, after putting to rest all movements in the mind, because yoga can also means joining together. Other commentaries on the Yoga Sutras include, Bhoja Raja's Raja Martanda, 11th century. Vijnanabhisu's Yogabhashyavartaka explanation of the commentary on the Yoga Sutras of Vyasa. The writer was a Vaishnava philosopher and exegete who tried to harmonize Samkhya and Vedanta and held the Bedabeda view. Ramananda Sarasvati's Yogamani Prabha 16th century Swami Hariharananda Aranya's Basvati topic Modern translations and commentary Countless commentaries on the Yoga Sutras are available today. The sutras, with commentaries, have been published by a number of successful teachers of yoga, as well as by academicians seeking to clarify issues of textual variation. There are also other versions from a variety of sources available on the Internet. The many versions display a wide variation, particularly in translation. The text has not been submitted in its entirety to any rigorous textual analysis, and the contextual meaning of many of the Sanskrit words and phrases remains a matter of some dispute. Some modern translations and interpretations are, Gangananth Jha rendered a version of the Yoga Sutras with the Yogabhashya attributed to Vyasa into English in its entirety. This version of Jaws also include notes drawn from Vikaspati Misra's Tattvavasaradi amongst other important texts in the yoga commentarial tradition. Raja Yoga, an 1896 book by Swami Vivekananda which provides translation and an in-depth explanation of Yoga Sutra. The Science of Yoga, a 1961 book by I.K. Timney which provides commentary with sutras in Sanskrit and translation and commentary in English. An online version is available. Sri Shailendra Sharma, relying on his own experience as a practitioner of Karma Yoga, translated the sutras into Hindi and included a commentary on them. Barbara Stoller Miller, the Yoga Sutras attributed to Patanjali, Yoga, Discipline of Freedom. University of California Press, Berkeley, 1996. Swami Sachidananda, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Integral Yoga Pub, Yogaville. Swami Prabhavananda, Patanjali Yoga Sutras, Sri Ramakrishna Math, Madras, India. BKS Iyengar's Light on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, Edwin F. Bryant's The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali: A New Edition, Translation, and Commentary. Georg Feuerstein, Ph.D., The Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, A New Translation and Commentary, Inner Traditions International, Rochester, Vermont, 1989. Swami Kriyananda, "...demystifying Patanjali, the Yoga Sutras, the Wisdom of Paramhansa Yogananda." Crystal Clarity Publishers, Nevada City, California, 2013. Charles Johnston Dublin University, Sanskrit Prizeman, "...the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali." The Book of the Spiritual Man. Quote, An Interpretation by Charles Johnston. 
Copyright 1912, by Charles Johnston http colon slash slash www.gutenberg.org slash files slash 2526 slash 2526.txt Topic Influence Topic Indian traditions Patanali was not the first to write about yoga. Much about yoga is written in the Moksadharma section of the epic Mahabharata. The members of the Jaina faith had their own, different literature on yoga, and Buddhist yoga stems from pre Patanjali sources. Some of the major commentaries on the Yoga Sutras were written between the 9th and 16th century. After the 12th century, the school started to decline, and commentaries on Patanjali's yoga philosophy were few. By the 16th century, Patanjali's yoga philosophy had virtually become extinct. The manuscript of the Yoga Sutras was no longer copied, since few read the text, and it was seldom taught. Popular interest arose in the 19th century, when the practice of yoga according to the Yoga Sutras became regarded as the science of yoga and the supreme contemplative path to self realization by Swami Vivekananda, following Helena Blavatsky, president of the Theosophical Society. Western interest According to David Gordon White, the Yoga Sutra's popularity is recent. After it had been virtually forgotten for the better part of 700 years, Swami Vivekananda miraculously rehabilitated it in the final decade of the 19th century. It was with the rediscovery by a British Orientalist in the early 1800s that wider interest in the Yoga Sutras in the West arose. Yoga Sutras have become a celebrated text in the West, states White, because of Big Yoga, the corporate yoga subculture. Topic. See also Patanjali Samkhya Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Printed sources Topic. Web sources Topic. Further reading History David Gordon White 2014. The Yoga Sutra of Patanjali, A Biography. Princeton, N.J., Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-14377-4, Translations Bryant, Edwin F. 2009 The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. New York, North Point Press. ISBN 978-0-86547-736-0 Tola, Fernando, Dragonetti, Carmen, Prithi Paul, K. Dad 1987, The Yoga Sutras of Patanali on Concentration of Mind, Mudalal Banarsidas Practice and Commentaries Govindan, Marshall. Kriya Yoga Sutras of Patanjali and the Siddhas, Babaji's Kriya Yoga and Publications, 2000, Second Edition 2010, ISBN 978 one 895383 6 Iyengar, BKS 2002. Light on Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Hammersmith, London, UK, Thorsons. ISBN 978-0-00-714516-4 Master, E.K. The Yoga of Patanali Kalapati Book Trust ISBN 978-81-85943-05-3 Swami Satyandanda Four Chapters on Freedom, Commentary on the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali ISBN 81-85787-18-2 External links Works by Patanali at Project Gutenberg Works by or about Yoga Sutras of Patanjali at Internet Archive Translations James Woods, The Yoga System of Patanali, or, The Ancient Hindu Doctrine of Concentration of Mind, Yoga Sutras, of Patanali 1914, Harvard University Press The Yoga Sutras of Patanali, translation by Bon Giovanni, at sacred-texts.com Yoga Sutras and Related Yoga Texts, at SanskritDocuments.org Yoga Bhashya Ganganath Jha, 1907, Yoga Philosophy with Vyasa Bhashya and Notes Commentaries Patanali, Yoga Sutras, a word-by-word translation 
translation with grammar and comment the Yoga Sutras of Patanali, the Book of the Spiritual Man by Patanali, an interpretation by Charles Johnston, at Project Gutenberg the Yoga Sutras of Patanali by Charles Johnston. Read online at LibriPass Audio Lectures on the Yoga Sutras, by Swami Harshananda, at archive.org Yoga Sutras online program by A. G. Mohan Yoga Sutras of Patanali, a Buddhist commentary. Yoga Sutras Commentary by a Modern Mystic